All right, so in the last video, we got to the point where we had a fully functioning website. And in this video, we're just gonna kinda go over a few more things you can do, uh, a few more functions of WordPress and things you can access from your dashboard to just give you a little more control of your website, make it look maybe a little more how you want. But keep in mind that all this that we're gonna do in this bonus video is uh, it's extra. It's on top of uh, what we've already taught uh, if you want to stop now and not go any further and and just go with the website you already have, that's great. If you want to learn how to do a few more things, uh, just stay tuned in this video and we'll go over that. All right, so we're going to start here on our dashboard. And what I want to do is just kind of go through this column on the left in a little more detail on what these options are and how they affect our site. So uh, let's go to Posts. And uh, you can see right here, if I click on all posts, we can just see our one blog post that we have already. Uh, you know, and you can do this quick edit thing, change the category, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, you can easily password protect a page if you want uh, by adding a password right here. Uh, you can uh, allow or not allow comments. And... Uh, you know, you can add more tags here. And basically, uh, we're going to get into this a little bit more in another part of this training. But uh, categories are kind of a way to organize your content around certain, um, uh, you know, certain taxonomies or categories. So this is a site about uh, parenting and parenting gear. So like a, a category might be cloth diapers, whereas a tag for that might be, uh, you know, there's a brand of cloth diapers called Fuzzy Buns um, or Bum Genius or whatever. Those could be actual tags. So the tags are sort of more granule, more zoomed in on whatever uh, specific thing uh, your, your blog post is about in, inside that general category of cloth diapering. So that's just an example. But we'll go over that in a little more detail right here and I'll just go ahead and show you how to do this so to add a category we're just going to do cloth diapers hit add new category and you can see it's right there so now when we go to write a post I'm just going to click add new here you can see we can check this box, cloth diapers, and now that this post will be categorized as a um, in that category. So it's good to really, you can check multiple categories here, but it's really best if you just kind of keep it simple. Maybe one category up to three, four, or five tags. If you go crazy and do like 10 categories and 20 tags, you're just kind of overloading uh, the tool, how these tools are meant to be used, and it's not really going to give you any real benefit from a search engine optimization standpoint. So just keep that in mind. So click on categories again. Um, that's really all you need to know uh, about adding categories and getting started with those tags. Uh, we don't have any tags, so. I'm just going to add a few here. Uh, what do we say? Fuzzy buns? Let's see. Fuzzy buns. I actually use cloth diapers with my kids. So I think that's how you spell it. So there it is. And uh, let's do bum genius. I think that's how they spell it. So, you know, we've created these tags. There they are. We go back to a blog post here. So you can see, uh, you know, I could select, start writing a post about the best cloth diapers. In my OP 
opinion. And I would select cloth diapers. And most of the time, you're just probably going to, if you're going to be using tags, you'll just actually create them from here. So you can just, you know, type in uh, fuzzy buns here and click add. And there it is. So it's attached to this post. Or you can choose from the most used, uh, which we haven't used yet. So there's nothing here. But essentially, you just click this add button. And you can also add new categories from this post window. You don't have to do it from that other area, but I'm just kind of showing you the where all that stuff lives. So that's tags and categories. Let's um, take a look over at our media library. So anytime we upload photos, uh, video, audio, PDFs, uh, they're going to live in our media library. Um, so if you're somewhat familiar with web design or whatever or, or web development you may be familiar with FileZilla or CyberDuck something like that which is a FTP or file transfer protocol client or application that helps you move stuff from your desktop like a photo to your website uh, Basically, WordPress is designed to make your life simple and not have to use external applications and learn how to code. So the media library is essentially the same thing as uh, using FileZilla or something like that. So as the more you learn about uh, WordPress uh, and web development, you may hear those terms come up of that application name or FTP, and that's what they're talking about. But that's what the media library does. The only drawback to it is it cannot handle super large files, I believe over um, 32 megabytes. So uh, in that case, you would need to use FileZilla or FTP. But for most people, that's not even an issue at all because they're mostly dealing with pictures and PDFs, uh, which tend to be under 32 gigabytes per file. So anyways, here's our media library. You can see the pictures we uploaded. Um, you can see where this one's being used as a header. And not much to go over here, you know, except if you want to like delete something, you can see these this menu pops up when you hover. And yeah, that's all we you really need to know is this this is where your media library is. Um, and if you're writing a post, and you want to use the same picture again you can just access your media library also from here so instead of selecting files from your desktop you can grab something from your media library so you can see a smaller version here show um, I usually turn off this link to the page with just a picture on it and insert into post Boom. So that's uh, you know accessing our media library from the the WordPress uh, post page. All right. So let's talk about links. WordPress kind of went ahead and just installed uh, you know some of their own default links uh, in here. So. But basically what a link is, if you go to a website and you see uh, like links to other sites, uh, for this website, I would say, you know, you could have, a, you know, an area with links in it called resources, and then you would link to various organizations, maybe like the uh, La Le Leche League or um, uh, some kind of uh, other attachment parenting group or just general parenting informational site or say a, a publisher that uh, focuses on um, you know conscious parenting and that sort of thing so to create a new link let's first you know this is we're looking at all our links here and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all these So I checked them all, bulk actions, delete, and hit apply. All right, they're gone. So I'm going to add new. 
So La Leche League. And I'm not sure what that website is, so just for the um, for this training, I'm just going to send it to Google. Add link. Okay, so you can see all links. There's La Leche League. Add new. Um, Maybe I want to link to uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, if this website has its own YouTube channel or this business, um, Major Baby Outfitter Videos, something like that. And again, since I don't have a web address for that, I'm just going to do. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash YouTube dot com just for demonstrations purposes. Add link. All right. So you can see we've got two links here, um, and we'll go over you know how to actually add that to your site a little further down here. So now we're on to pages, and. We've really covered this area. You can see our five page brochure website. It's all right here. Um, and go to our about page. So I guess the only thing I'm going to point out while we're here is just that uh, one of the things that makes pages different from posts is you can see there are no categories and tag options over here. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. It's one of the differences between pages and posts. The main difference being posts are designed to be more like news and regularly updated content, and pages are more static and unchanging. So we're going to click on over to comments here. And here are two comments. Uh, here is the default example comment that comes when you install WordPress. And here's the one that we did just testing. So what I'm going to do here is just show you how to delete a comment. Just hit trash. It's gone. That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, and we'll, we'll go over uh, some comment settings a little later and how to actually avoid getting spam comments. So appearance, this is an important area. Uh, you can see we're rocking the 2011 theme here, the 2010 theme. Uh, is not The 2010 theme is not installed, 2011 is installed, and these two are the default themes that come when you install WordPress. Uh, and I'm sure at some point, uh, you know, 2012 will be coming out. But uh, I just want to show you how to look for a new theme. Uh, there's a, you can pay money for a theme if you want. And there's a lot of great paid themes. I use, when I design a site for a client, uh, typically I'll use a paid theme because they just kind of give you more functionality and uh, you know you can really customize them actually a lot more than, than these themes. But that being said, uh, you know, oftentimes for a business, especially just starting out or on a lower budget for web design and websites, just using this 2011 theme is, is great out of the box. But I'm just going to click install themes here and show you how to um, shop for themes. Let's say I like black, uh, right sidebar, you know, flexible width. Um, just kind of leave it that, find themes. And here's a bunch of free themes that you know you could play around with. You can spend a lot of time in a theme land <laughs> uh, looking for themes. Uh, my main 
recommendation to you is to, if you do decide to venture out of the 2011 theme, uh, which I don't really advise uh, for a lot of reasons, but if you do, um, I recommend that you uh, pick a theme that's responsive because with the way the web is going and how people look at the internet and look for businesses and sites on different topics, uh, it's moving more and more towards the phone or the mobile smartphone and the tablet device. So if your theme is not responsive, uh, you, you know, people can still look at it and see it, but it's not as appealing to them. And some of that is sort of sunk subconscious for the user that they can't, they always have to like zoom and kind of, you know, tweak the site so that they can read it on, their, on the small screen. But the 2011 theme is a, a great theme. I recommend just sticking with it, but take some time and uh, browse these themes just so you can kind of get a feel of different options out there. And another way to access these is just do a Google search for free WordPress themes and you'll see you want to make sure it's the wordpress.org extend themes. So this website here you can see there's 1,555 available themes for you to check out. You can see 2011 right there. Um, those are there for you to check out. Uh, but again, I recommend just staying with the 2011 theme. All right, now we're going to talk about widgets. Widgets are, let me go over to the blog so I can show you. Actually, we're there right now. So this, this is called the content area, and over here on the right, this is called the sidebar area. So you can see this little recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, meta. And uh, these are what's called widgetized areas in the sidebar. And there's actually, you can have widgets in the footer, you have widgets in the header in different places, um, depending upon the theme. But let's take a look you can see um, over here where's links links so if I move this this links widget these are our available widgets over here and I'm just gonna put this at the top and, and yet sometimes these have options just take a look at them and pop back over here and you'll see it pop in over here all right, so there's our links that we created earlier. Remember we were talking about uh, how we would have, uh, show how the links area from our dashboard, we would use it later. So if I click on this, it's not gonna go to the La Leche League, it's gonna go to Google, because that's where I told it the link was. But that is, um, you know, what links do. And you can also create these just inside of a text box. So you don't necessarily have to use the link function. It's really up to you. Uh, you know, you can take links out. So for example, I'm gonna take the search one out since we already have a search function at the top of the site. I don't really see the need to have it twice. So I'm gonna hit refresh. Boom, there we go. And Now here's the footer area. Let's put a text footer or a text uh, widget in there. So I'm just going to give an example contact. Say you want to put a phone number down there. Five 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 five. Save. And then so we added a text widget. We added content to it, and it's for the footer one, which is going to be over here. I'm going to hit refresh, see our changes, and there it is. So this is often a good area to put contact information. That way, uh, if a visitor you know, wants to contact you, they can do it from any page. They don't necessarily have to take the extra step of going to your contact page. So that's widgets, and the best way to learn widgets is actually just to play around with them. Uh, you can't break them. Uh, just try them in different areas, see how they look, and see how they adapt to your site. And just keep in mind that this inactive widgets area 
is where you can drag a widget like this, which is no longer a blank text widget, which you see right here. And this saves the formatting, or in this case, just a couple lines of text that we entered. So that if you want to pull it out, but want to be able to maybe put it back in later, or uh, you know, put it in somewhere else later, it's already saved and good to go. So that's widgets, and play around with them. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right, menus. All right, so you can actually customize your menu. So you see how our this theme automatically adds any new page you create to the menu. Um, there's situations where you don't necessarily want every single page to be on your menu that you have on your site or you may want to change the order of the pages here so I'm going to go over how to create a custom menu first you give it a name and I'm just going to call it main menu alright and then I am going to add all these pages and then I'm just going to reorder them how I want so it's good to have the welcome or the home page first about uh, maybe I'll put the store second about blog content save menu and you'll see over here when I hit refresh you'll see the order change oh here oh yeah so we have to set tell the theme that this theme supports one menu select which menu you would like to use we're gonna tell it to make the primary menu this main menu that we just created so I'm gonna hit save go over here and we'll see the order of the items change there there you go and also keep in mind uh, a lot of people you know they say they don't have time for blogging, they don't want to blog, they don't want it on their site. Um, a blog is a good idea from a search engine optimization standpoint. Even if you're busy, just make five really good articles or posts or hire someone to do it um, and just have it on your site. But if you want to remove the blog from your website, what some people think that WordPress is just a blogging platform. It's not. It's a fully featured web design platform so if you just want a straight up website no blog period you know you want to create that your custom menu here which I called main menu and I'm just gonna remove that blog page and now it's gone we have no blog on our site so this is a fully functional WordPress site with no blog uh, but in this case I am gonna add it back there we go. I'm going to hit save. Make sure it's there. All right. So that's menus, uh, theme options. Uh, this is an example of where if you were to use a premium theme, uh, you would have often uh, maybe a hundred times more options than you have here. That being said, there is a lot of beauty and elegance to the few options you do have here. And at the end of the day, um, you know, having a, a well, you know, planned content on your website is more important than how it looks. Although presentation is important, and uh, you know, you can go crazy with options if you want. But I'm going to go over these real quick. These are really basic. So we have a white theme going here and we can switch that to black and automatically change the links to orange there hit save I hit refresh so there's the black website and that's really just personal preference on what you think looks better what your customer think thinks looks better and then you can also uh, change the color of the links you know, and the way you do that is you just move this stuff around and 
you know, you can change the color. You know, if I want a blue link, I'll move it over here into the blue zone. And you can see our different options there. So I'm going to select that color. Save changes. So we have black with blue links. Hit refresh. You can see how that's blue. Actually, it's a little purple. But um, that's how you create those links, uh, or the color of the links. The other option you have here, I'm just going to switch this back to white. Hit refresh. OK. We still have, we're going to keep our purple color there. Uh, we just went over the widgetized areas in the sidebar, which is this area right here. So this is the header, the content area, and the sidebar. We can switch it so the sidebar is on the left. So you'll see on our blog, then the sidebar is over there. And the other option we have is actually to remove it and have our site be all about the content, no sidebar at all. So it actually shrinks it up like that. Still, this is a really nice looking, clean, uh, minimalist site here. For this, I, I actually really recommend this if you can figure out a way to do your business in this style. Um, the way a lot of websites are just so over cluttered um, too full, crammed with information and links. It sometimes it's really refreshing and nice, and the user is more likely to stay on your site. They come to a nice, relaxed, you know, simple website like this. They don't feel overwhelmed, you know. And then, and this obviously adjusts, still adjusts quite nice to the mobile device. All right, I'm just going to switch it back to the. Uh, Fault layout. And I just want to make a, one more uh, note here on pages and sidebars. So, on our welcome page, if we wanted to have a sidebar, we would just change this from default template to sidebar. Update. See, there's our Welcome page, and boom, now our welcome page has a sidebar. But again, I'm a big believer in a more minimalist site, especially in these times. So I've changed it back. So it's just like this. All right, so that's theme options. Uh, we went over the header. We've already kind of gone through this. Uh, I guess one thing we didn't show is that you can not show text. You can uncheck that box. And what that's going to do is going to remove this area. You'll see what I mean. I'll hit Save Changes here. And it puts the search box right here. Uh, this is a nice clean design. If you're going to do it this, I do recommend that you have your business name here. Just keep in mind that uh, a user needs to know immediately when they hit your site what you are, what you're all about, uh, how you can help them. Uh, and if you're a location-specific business or or a project, you need to have uh, your location up there so that people can instantly tell if what they found is relevant to them. So in that light, I'm going to put the header text back up there. All right, so background. So you can just change the color if you want. You know, say we want to kind of go with a little feminine purple. Hit save changes. Right now this is a kind of an off-white, off-gray background. And boom, there's a purple. That's a little intense. It's easy to go overboard uh, with your colors. And I think this is actually a little intense. But you can play around with these. And uh, you know, let's just take a look 
like a softer purple there. So that is a little better. Um, it's personal preference, but just keep in mind that your visitor may not have your preferences. So sometimes it's good to go with kind of a generic white, off-white, gray, black. Uh, but you can definitely inject as much personality as you want. You can also add images to your background. So I'm actually... Hold on a second. I'm gonna, you can like browse your computer and pull an image or you can grab something you already have in your media library. So in this case, um, I'm going to grab these feet and you know you can see the full size is like this so we'll just do it and, and show you different ways of messing with it. So we're going to hit set as background. There we go. And then we have some display options, left, center, right, tile, uh, tile horizontally, vertically, scroll, fixed. I'm just going to hit save changes and see what we got here. So you can see we're surrounded with baby feet here. Um, and you can just keep playing with this. So, if I hit no repeat, you can see that it's not quite big enough to really cover, um, you know, the whole background. But that's and that's just because of the size of the image we're working with. So, but there are some instances where you just kind of want an image of like a person or something in the corner. So that's you could this would work for some sites, not necessarily this site. And I'm just going to hit tile again and show you what scroll versus fix means. So welcome. You see how the background doesn't move? That's fixed. And if we have it set to scroll, you can see the background moves with the image. So, in my opinion, those feet are a little much, so I'm just going to take them out and head back to just using a color. Hit default, save changes, and let's see here. I guess I gotta hit remove background image. Alright, select a color. Actually, no, there's our default color, which is just a number and then a combination of six uh, letters and numbers. Save changes. And we're back where we were. So sometimes less is more. I personally kind of like this. Oops. So, background editor, if you click on editor, this is the actual code of your website and this is why WordPress is so beautiful is that you never have to touch this stuff. And I strongly recommend you don't touch it because you could make an error and that it, you can't recover from because you just you don't know where you made the error or you changed something and sometimes that's just erasing one little symbol or a letter it can have pretty dramatic uh, consequences on your website. So accessing the editor function, unless you're highly skilled, um, you know, more than just a beginner or, or extremely advanced, you don't want to touch the editor. So let's go to plugins. WordPress comes with a few default plugins installed. Hello Dolly. Uh, it doesn't even really do anything. I just delete that one right away. <laughs> But plugins are uh, basically how you add uh, certain features and functionality to your blog. Most plugins are free. 
and really the sky is the limit of what's possible, what you can do with plugins. Anything from creating contact forms on your website to preventing spam, to having social media share options, to making videos display a certain way, to integrating databases and tables and shopping carts and all kinds of things into your website can be done through the plugin functionality. Uh, essentially what a plugin is, is it's just some programming, some code to achieve a desired outcome. So if you want to make it so that you're very unlikely to ever get a spam comment, you would install, in this case it's already installed, but this Ac Acusmet uh, plugin and activate it, go through the setup and essentially you've just added some additional programming to your site that gives you whatever outcome it is you're looking for. Uh, Jetpack by WordPress, we're not gonna go over in this video, but I highly recommend you use it. It's a good way to add social media to your site and uh, add analytics to your site. Um, Jetpack is essentially, uh, takes a lot of the power of the free version of WordPress, you know, if your website was naturebabyoutfitter.wordpress.com, it takes a lot of the features uh, available to those users and allows you to use them on your self-hosted private website. So I highly recommend you play around with Jetpack and activate its analytics and its so social media share and like and tweet and pin it, all that kind of functionality. So first, Acusmet, if you're going to allow comments on your site, you definitely want to activate this one. So I'm just going to hit activate. All right, and you can see this change from, you know, having the option to activate to now it has the option to deactivate. So there's pretty simple instructions. Uh, to get started, click activate, which we did. Sign up for an API key, so I'm going to command click this to open a new window. And then go to your Askimet configuration page, which is the settings. Alright, so see how we're inside of plugins and we're on this Askimet configuration page. So you go here and then you click on get an Acusmet API key. And it's being slow to load. There we go. So most people go the personal route. They hit sign up. You can slide this guy to zero or make a donation. And you just fill in your information and they'll send you an API key, which is just a string of numbers. It's like a, a password uh, looking uh, string of text. And you just copy it, paste it right here and hit update options and you're good to go. I highly recommend you use this plugin. And then uh, we're going to go over another one here. Um, basically we want to add a contact form to our site. So I'm searching plugins and I actually know the one I want. It's called Contact Form 7. And I don't see it there, so I'm just going to type it in here. Search. This is probably the most popular contact form. Here it is. I'm going to hit Install Now. All right, I'm going to hit Activate Plugin. All right, so we have a contact form, an Acusmet plugin, um, and then we have Jetpack, which I strongly 
advise that you play around with. Now let's go ahead and we've activated this but we still need to add a, a contact form to our page. So what that is going to look like is we're going to add it to this page. So I'm going to go to settings All right, and you know you can change this information a little bit, but based on what you've already told WordPress, you should be good to go with just copying this. This is called a short code. You see these brackets on the end? These are typically hold uh, what's called a short code. So if you paste this on your site, uh, it will create. It's like a shortcut to programming a certain type of feature, in this case, a contact form. So I'm just going to copy that and go to our contact page and I'm just going to paste it right here and show you something and hit update. So there's nothing there right now. So you can see it added the form right here. So someone, you know, just type in uh, this. The, if they s fill this form out and click send, then it will, you know, automatically send an email to whatever email address you told it to. So contact forms are also a nice way to keep your email address private if you want to which is a way to avoid spam or just not publicly display your email address maybe you're running your business through your primary gmail or hotmail account so that is how you would create a contact form so now that we have this contact form I'm gonna go ahead and erase that email address and just make a note Fill out the form below to email us. Update. All right, there it is. So now our email address is private, and we have this nice looking contact form on our site for users to use. All right, so that's plugins in a nutshell. You could spend a ton of time there. What I recommend you do, just like for themes, is just do a Google search for WordPress plugins. And this is the WordPress, you know, you want to be on the WordPress.org site. And there's 20,000, over 20,000 different plugins that you could use. So, uh, you know, there's really unlimited options of what you can do with plugins. So, let's say you wanted to uh, put some kind of slideshow on your site. So, search plugins, boom, there's like a bunch of different uh, slideshow plugins. Let's say you wanted to, uh, you know, have a background image on your site that automatically fit whatever the person's computer size monitor was so that it was just like one image that always fit perfectly. Full screen background image. There you go. So I usually click on screenshots. Sometimes they make you link out somewhere else. Uh, and here's a video demonstration. Uh, and it looks like, here's some more screenshots of it. It looks like they're actually using the 2010, or no, they're using the 2011 theme. Uh, to demonstrate this. So to get this image to fit perfectly in the background, they added 
this simple full screen background image plugin. So have fun with plugins. In my opinion, less is more. You don't want to get uh, so much going on that um, you know you have to kind of update your WordPress theme from time to time and your version of WordPress. And now you have plugins you need to update. So in my opinion, less is more. Go easy on them. But if you ever find yourself stuck and you need a solution for a certain feature on your site, there's probably a plugin for that. Uh, users. So in this case, let's say you wanted to create a uh, you know a different user to work on your site. Like say you you had a webmaster that you wanted to kind of give them their own access to your site. Uh, first, let's kind of learn how users work by looking at our own. So this is us admin, the main user. So, you know, when we created this, when we installed WordPress, we told it to use admin as the username for the main access point. But we can also create a nickname here. Um, I'm just going to do it the name of the store, which is Nature Baby. Outfitter display name publicly as Nature Baby Outfitter. You know, you could change this email address if you wanted to. Uh, and this is just some more advanced features like sometimes if you make a comment on, a, on your site, you can have more information come up about who you are or whatever. This is what this biographical info uh, is about your is for right here. So I'm going to hit update profile and show you where you can see that difference. If we go to blog, you can see, uh, let's see here, is there an author? Uh, it doesn't say posted by Nature Baby Outfitter. Well, there might be a setting somewhere where you can find that and you, you, it could say posted on this date by Nature Baby Outfitter. So that's kind of what a user is. But another way to look at users is um, say you're a business and you want multiple people to log into the site and maybe they might log in simultaneously to update it or make a blog post or update the design. Um, so by the way before we go into adding a new user, just keep in mind this area down here is you could change a, a password if you wanted to update your password or update somebody else's. But you are the main administrator. You have full control over all users. So I'm going to click Add New. And I'm just going to create a user called Support. And support at naturebabyoutfitter.com and we'll just create a password here one two three four And the role here, um, you know, you could send them this password by email. But we're going to just make this user an administrator. Let's say you're hiring someone else to manage your website. So now you can see there's a support, and you can give them their own unique access. And I'm just going to delete this user. So. Um, because we don't really uh, need to have them in this case, but just to be, just to make sure we're absolutely clear here, if you go to log into the site here, naturebabyoutfitter.com wp-admin. Let me actually log out here. So you land on this screen. So the user, the new user, would enter their information here and type in their password 
and that's how they would access the site. So that is what a user is, and that's the main way to think about it. So let's take a look at tools. Oh, log back in. So you can, uh, there's really not much you need tools for. Uh, if you want to play around with Prestos, you can. But for most businesses and personal sites, it's not relevant. Um, import, if you've had your a bunch of content, you've been blogging on a free platform like uh, Blogger, you can import everything into your WordPress site from here. And you can also export everything from your website. But really, if you're getting into this area, uh, unless you're just starting out and importing all your blog posts from another website or a free service. Um, you don't really need to mess around with the tools. So let's take a look at settings. Let's start at general. So here's the name of our site. Uh, tagline is really important for uh, marketing purposes. So for your parenting adventure uh, I'm just going to add and store and you see for your parenting adventure here is our tagline I'm gonna hit refresh and there's and store I'm actually going to take that out but just showing you where that happens where that takes effect now keep in mind if you weren't able to get the domain name you wanted like naturebabyoutfitter.com you can still title your site uh, exactly what you want. So, if you had, if this domain name was taken, naturebabyoutfitter.com, so you bought uh, naturebabyoutfitterstore.com, but you really want to just be called Nature Baby Outfitter, that's, that's what this is for. You can really tell the search engines and what displays on your site, you know, exactly what goes up here, even if it's different than what is up here. All right, so there's our WordPress address. That's all good. This is the main uh, email address for administration purposes. So if you like get an email when someone posts a comment, this is how WordPress knows where to send that email. Uh, you can change your time zone. Change how the date looks. Time, when the week starts. So these are all just very basic uh, settings here in the general area. Let's go to writing. So the size of the post box is 20 lines which is you know, right in here. And uh, actually that might be um, that might be the actual WordPress editor post box from the back end. But either way, you don't really have to mess with that. Uh, just kind of take a look at these settings. And uh, really, you don't, you don't need to mess with these general writing settings. Uh, the main, the, the only thing that I typically change on this page is from uncategorized. I'll often create a category that's just the name of the business. So let me just do that real quick. Categories, post categories. Major baby outfitter. That new category, there it is. Back to settings writing. In this way, the default post category, if I don't select one, it says Nature Baby Outfitter instead of uncategorized, which just looks kind of lazy in my opinion. 
So I'm gonna hit save changes. So if you are in a hurry and don't or don't even think about categorizing your your content, WordPress will automatically uh, throw this category on your blog post, which is also probably good in, on some level for search engine optimization. So let's head on over to reading. And you can see uh, we want our home page, which is the .com, naturebabyoutfitter.com, to be a static page and not our blog. So the setting here is all about that. If you want your blog to be your home page, click this. If you want your welcome or whatever page to be your home page, uh, you can make your store your home page, whatever the options up to you. But you would just select from your pages and tell it which um, which page is uh, your home page. And you can also tell it which page is your blog. For example, uh, we called our actual blog. We created a page. We called it blog. We could actually call that news if we wanted to instead of blog so we could tell it that the news page which we don't have but if we did was our what we wanted our blog page to be and have all the commenting functionality and all that so your blog pages can show you know 10 20 100 it's up to you it's a it's a question of how fast you want your uh, your website to load and how much information you want your viewer to see. You could even do just one if you wanted to. I recommend just leaving it at 10. And yeah, anytime you make an update, just hit save changes and you're good to go. Uh, let's take a look at discussion. So this area here, um, I pretty much just want to leave at the defaults up top, you know, just take take a moment and read through them. All these really are self-explanatory. It's just up to you if you want to be emailed whenever somebody posts a comment. Uh, you know how strict you want to be on your comments. Uh, if you if you want to just automatically delete comments uh, or put it in your has to be approved by you area. You know, if it contains like a certain word, you know, you could add those words in here. And if you wanted a, a comment to automatically be deleted, if it had certain words in it, like swear words or whatever, you could put those words in here. So uh, that's up to you. And then avatars, just to show you what that is, uh, you can see this little head right here uh, is an avatar so it, when someone enters their email address you can actually have an image attached to that which is called a gravatar um, if someone makes a comment and doesn't have a gravatar WordPress is a asking us which symbol we want to use so right now it's set to the mystery man um, you know we could change it to this Oh, looks like the web's down for a second. Let me try refreshing. So we could change it to that. And you see, there's the mystery man, they call it. You see, now it looks like this. And gravatars are really a lot of fun. Um, to set yours up, which you should do, I guess just do a Google search for Gravatar. Globally recognized avatars. And just follow the instructions here. And so instead of the mystery man or that symbol or whatever, when you reply to someone's comment on your blog or you go comment on a blog somewhere else on the internet and put in a certain email address, uh, your face 
or a gravatar or symbol or logo or whatever you want it to be will be in this box. So that's what gravatars are. And let's take a look at media. You don't really want to change any uh, settings here. Take a look at privacy. So if you want to build your uh, website, you know, before the public can find it, you can click this, ask search engines not to index this site, or if you really just don't want to be found by search engines, click that. Um, it, there's no guarantee that they still won't find you and index your site and come up in results. So really the, the real solution to that is to actually uh, install like a coming soon or you know down for maintenance type page which you can actually do with a plugin just do a search for uh, coming soon or maintenance mode or you know splash page something like that and you will um, you can get a plugin that will you know kind of hide your site behind one of those coming soon pages but you can do this too if you want just uh, be sure to switch it to back to allow search engines to index the site when you're done so that you don't accidentally end up with a site and you're wondering why you can't find it in Google. Uh, maybe you messed around with these settings. So permalinks, I recommend that you either go with the default or uh, just go with the post name. And what a permalink is, let me go to our homepage. So our homepage has nothing after the dot com. And that's what a homepage is. If we go to the store, you can see it's forward slash question mark page ID 8. That's the permalink. Um, I recommend that you just leave it where it is or you know switch it to one of these uh, or even uh, just this one but basically what you don't want to have end up happening is say you write a lot on one topic you don't want to end up uh, creating the same you know link extension or permalink after the dot com so that's why this default setting is question mark page p stands for page equals one two three which is just a uh, kind of wordpress language of where that you know the data for that file lives and that will no matter what always be unique so that's why the the default install goes with that so i recommend you just kind of stay with it uh... if you want to play around with it you can and you can also, I'm just going to add a new post here. Uh, testing the permalinks. So this is, okay, you can see how it gives me an option to manually change the permalink. Oh, it's just linking to this page for this theme. So yeah. Uh, that's what this is all about. So just keep in mind, uh, you know, if you ever want to give somebody a link to a certain page on your website, like to the store page, for example, you would give them this full URL. And, um, you know, you can copy and paste that. And you're not seeing it, but when you do paste this, there will be a HTTP colon forward slash forward slash naturebabyoutfitter.com forward slash question mark page underscore ID equals eight. That is the full URL for that page, and that's what you want to use whenever someone asks for a link. Uh, they're typically not asking for just this part. So keep that in mind if that's what a full URL is. All right, so I'm going to collapse this menu so you know you can hide all this stuff especially if you're um,
let's say you're working on a page and you just want a little more real estate on your screen you know you can uh, collapse the menu over here and pop it back out if you need to and if you want to go really minimalist you can click on this guy right here and go to a full screen mode just to sort of eliminate uh, distraction so just play around with these buttons and and you'll uh, kinda get a sense for what they all do and that completes this session of just kinda going over some few uh, few more bonus kinda beginner WordPress training um, like I said, this is all bonus material, and uh, before this video started, you were already at a point where you could create a fully functioning website. Uh, but it's uh, you know it's nice to know uh, a few more options if you if you had time and enjoyed this session. I'm glad you did, and um, if you have any other questions or kind of get stuck, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to help. All right.